Welcome to South Florida Saltwater Fishing. I'm Heath, and it's time to get into the bite. Dolphin in the boat. Oh my God. Woo! Mutton snapper Let's right there, this. baby. You ever been out trolling and you look around you and you see people going different speeds and doing different things and you wonder to yourself, man, am, am I going too fast? Am I going too slow? Am, am I doing things right? Well, in this video, we're gonna try and help you figure that out and answer those questions. Before we get into this though, do us a favor, hit that subscribe button, give this video a like, leave us a comment. We'd love to hear from you. Before we do this, I need to start out by saying two things. Number one, there is no correct trolling speed. There's ranges in which you should try to develop a practice and a habit. And number two, I don't claim to know everything. I'm just going to be sharing information with you that uh, I have found has worked for me throughout my years of fishing. When we're going to talk about trolling speed, the first thing we need to do is understand how to talk about it and get our lingo squared away. Um, when we talk about trolling speed, we talk about it in knots. Knots is a metric measurement of speed in maritime applications and uh, airspace. It's also, they also record wind speed in uh, knots too. Um, knots were developed uh, as a form of measurement back in the 1700s from sailors. They used to tie knots literally in ropes and measure the distance between the knots and that would tell them how fast they were going. So that being said, we talk about knots. When we're going to talk about the speed at which you want to troll, you want to pay attention to what is called your GPS speed. You cannot pay attention to your tachometer reading or your odometer reading if you have an odometer on your boat. First off, your tachometer gives you a reading of how fast your impeller is turning in your engine. That does you no good. Next, your odometer gives you your overwater speed. So let's say for instance, your boat is heading this way and the current is heading this way. Your odometer could say you are really booking it up 12, 15 miles an hour. When in reality, you're probably only really going four miles an hour over the land. So you want to pay attention to your GPS speed. On your GPS somewhere, if you have one, there is a little logo that says GPS speed and it reads out in knots. So, you need to pay attention to this in order to properly gain some sort of clear assessment of how fast you are traveling over the land. Because believe it or not, the bottom is what you're traveling over, which is land. The first form of trolling we're going to go over is the most basic form of trolling, which is topwater trolling. You want to get out, you want to go for dolphin, bonita, tuna, anything that may hit something up on top. You want to throw out, uh, you know, a billy bait turbo slammer or a pink skirt, uh, you know, set them out on some spinning gear, maybe a light conventional rod and just go for it. Have a good old time, not try and get too complicated. Basic, basic trolling. Good to go. So when I am doing this, I tend to set my GPS speed between six and 10 knots. Now, that is if I'm trolling just artificials. You can really pick up your speed if you're trolling just artificials. You do not have to worry about outrunning the fish. They will be able to catch you at 10 knots. But typically, I try to stay between the six to eight knot range with that. Now, let's say for instance, you have an Islander and you've got um, some real bait behind it like a ballyhoo or a mullet and you're trolling that with some fresh bait or frozen bait. You don't want to go so fast. You'll wash your bait out in a very short period of time. So you're going to want to slow it down a little bit. If I'm trolling baits such as ballyhoos or mullets, um, I will tend to slow it down and go between five and seven knots. And again, 
you want to watch how fast you're going because you don't want your bait to wash out. So if you're going against the current, you might want to back it down to more of the five knot era. If you're going with the current, you can pick it up a little bit to seven knots and have the fish chase you down. Remember, trolling is about triggering an impulse bite. It's not about giving the fish a chance to come up and examine your bait. All right, so that's the basics for topwater trolling. The next type of trolling I want to go over is planer trolling, one of my favorite to do. Uh, we've done it a bunch in the last few episodes. You can check it out. I go over it in detail of what you need to do. So you get set out your planer. You got your sea witch with your little squirt squid and a bonita strip hooked up. What is the best speed to troll at for this? I tend to go between six and eight knots with a planer. With or against the current, I try to keep it up. Uh, it makes, and lots of times you're going for kingfish when you're trolling a planer in my area, and it, it's a really booking speed and it makes the kingfish chase it down. It also, once they hit it, it they're, you're going so fast that it yanks them right up to the surface and it makes them swim streamline and it makes it easier to reel in and hand line in at the same time. So, six to eight knots for a planer. Next, we're going to talk about high speed trolling. What you're going to do is you're going to let your high speed trolling lure out, typically a, a nice sized wahoo lure. You're going to let it out at about, you know, four to five knots and then you're going to pick up the speed. You're going to be wanting to travel between 14 and 18 knots. You can drop it down to 12, but you typically want to be going higher than 14. What high speed trolling does is it eliminates all bycatch. So if you are in the right depth and you're high speed trolling for Wahoo, which is typically between 150 and 300 feet where most of the Wahoo hang out, uh, you will only be pretty much hit tuna or Wahoo. If you go in shallower than 150 and you're in about 120 feet, Barracuda can chase down a high speed trolling lure and it will destroy your 50, 60, 70, 80, how much ever uh, dollar value your lure is. So remember, high speed trolling, you want to be between 14 and 18 knots and make sure you pay attention to that depth to when you're doing it. Now I want to talk about live bait trolling, also known as bump trolling. So what you've done is you've gone out and you've caught a live bonita or you have a live mullet or a pilchard and you want to set them out and you want to troll them. You can put a weight on, drag them down to the bottom, you can leave them up on top, you can have some sort of spread, a little bit of everything, covering the water column. You don't want to put a live bait on a planer, it doesn't really work. But that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the speed. It's called bump trolling for a reason. You're generally just drifting with the current. What you'll want to do is you want to put your boat in forward, bump it in forward, put it back in neutral and let it go. Keep your line tight. Don't let it go slack because then you're not dragging your bait through the water enticing a bite. Uh, your, uh, your bait is on a hook which is going to make it act like an injured fish but bump trolling is precisely that. You're not really trolling, you're kind of drifting with the current and you're bumping it forward and you let it go back into neutral. This, you, there's no real speed for it. It's as slow as you can go. You're basically drifting a live bait. An important thing to know about trolling and trolling speed is it's, it's an involved process. Trolling properly and maintaining your speed is not a set it and forget it thing. You don't go, okay, man, I'm good. I'm at six knots. I'm trolling. I'm good. Walk away, turn away, go get a water, eat a sandwich. You turn around. You don't got weeds on your lines or nothing. You're good to go and you're just going. No, no. The current changes. You're behind waves. You're going against the current. You're going into waves. You got to constantly monitor that and try to maintain a constant speed. Now, that being said, once you find the speed in the direction or whatever you may do that the fish are hitting, you want to repeat that process. If you're going against the current at six knots and the fish are hitting that, keep doing that. If you find that you slow it down or you speed it up and they're doing that and you're going, you're heading straight in, 
fishing is about repeating the process. Once you find the fish, there's no reason to change it. They're right there, unless it's not the fish you're looking for and or it's the wrong species. Change it up. Figure it out. That's, you know, why it's called fishing and not catching. So again, the scope of trolling is very large. Uh, if I've skipped out anything, uh, I did not do it intentionally. I just wanted to get some basic understanding and some uh, general knowledge out to share with everyone. If there's any questions that you have, something that you think I may have skipped that is very important, please let me know. Like I said, I don't claim to know everything. I'm just trying to share this knowledge and make it so that everyone can go out and be happy cappers fishing. All right, everybody. That about does it for this episode. Hope you had fun. I hope you learned a little bit about trolling speed. Till next time, South Florida saltwater fishing, going wherever the cool wind takes us.